Brothers and sisters in Christ, there was this one hunter who was lost in the woods. Exhausted out of the wilds, he stumbled into a camp. Am I glad to see you, he said to another hunter who was in the camp. I have been lost for three days, he said. The other hunter replied, Don't get too excited. I have been lost for three weeks. He thought that after all this searching, he finally found somebody who could help him, giving him direction. In fact, he just found another person who was just as lost as he was. Have you ever been lost, brothers and sisters? Maybe as a child? It is probably the most frightening thing for anybody, especially children. And it happened to one of my cousins when he was only four years old. I remember we were in Pasar Malam in Jakarta. I don't know whether you have Pasar Malam here. It's usually a crowded place. It's Jakarta Fair in Jakarta. Yeah? And you cannot afford to lose your child there because it's so difficult to find so many people. While we were walking, suddenly we were aware that this boy was not walking with us anymore. And while we were frantically searching, especially the mother, my auntie, suddenly we heard an announcement with a loudspeaker about a boy who came to report that he was lost. So it didn't take us very long to find him because, you know, apparently my cousin at that time, at four years old, was quite smart. You know, I don't know how he found. Anyway, he reported himself that he was lost. And then, uh, you know, the ordeal didn't last too long. <clears throat> now we know that being lost is not so pleasant. When I recently went back to Manado on my holiday, the first thing that I did was to buy a map. I can call it a home, but actually because I was born there, but I never grew up in that city. I only visited every once in a while, and uh, last time I was there, I also bought a map, but I don't know where I put the map. So this time I had to buy another map. When I told my auntie that I was going to buy the map, she said, No, oh, that's such a waste of money. But not for me, because I wanted to know where I was, where I was going, you know. It was like seeing a bigger picture of where I was. <clears throat> but there are many ways of being lost. One need not go into the woods or into a big city to be lost. In fact, one can feel lost right in one's own home, not knowing what to do with our life make us feel like we are also lost. Being lost is actually the story of our life, but being found is the story of our faith. You may ask, who? Me? I'm found? But how come God never listens to my prayer or my cry? Well, we are not the only one. The prophet Habakkuk seemed to have experienced the same thing when he said to God, Yahweh, how long will I cry for help while you pay no attention to me? I'm sure we have experienced the similar moments in our lives. Yahweh answered the prophet, <clears throat> not by fulfilling his request, but by telling that things will happen in due time. The problem, brothers and sisters, is not with God and with his ways, but with our limited understanding of him. With such experience in life, we struggle daily to move from doubts to faith. 
And everyone is included in this kind of struggle, including priests and nuns, I'm sure, or brothers. Because we like to make our own plans. And many times things just do not work out as we plan. And we get confused whether we should trust God or not. And then when that happens, it is a real struggle to just sit back and let God unravel His plans at His own time. It's happening here. And that is why St. Paul encouraged Timothy to keep the precious deposit of faith and love and to allow the Holy Spirit to help us to mature in our understanding of God and in His ways, which very often different from our ways. The Lord Himself has assured us of this. If you have faith even the size of a mustard seed, you may say to this tree, be uprooted and plant yourself in the sea and it will obey. Now, how many of us here believe that? That if we have such a tiny bit of faith, we can do such thing. I believe that. And this is why. You see, when we have faith in God, we allow God to do His work. And aligning by aligning our will to His will. We cannot uproot a tree. Even the tiniest tree, we cannot uproot. If we don't, we, we don't touch it, I mean. Huh? But God can uproot the biggest tree in the world because He can do anything. It is Him who does the uprooting. I will share with you what I mean by trusting Him. It happened during my recent holiday in Indonesia. Usually during holidays, I try to use the opportunity to relax more and enjoy the moments. But I'm also aware that God may use it as a mission for me to touch or reach out to someone. I'm always aware of that. I don't know who I will meet and I don't know who, what I will say, but I know that I must open myself for that. 